So I got a new uh, home stereo. I mean, I just got like a new amp and some new speakers that my mother-in-law gave me. And it's just really overall improved the sound of my listening experience to vinyl. Uh, I also put a tape deck down there too. I'll show it to you one day. Um, anyway, uh, it's just improved my listening experience down in the living room and it's fall. And so <clears throat> I kind of feel like for some reason, I listen to a lot more jazz in the fall. Anyway, also, I think I got a hot night in Paris in the fall back in the early 2000s. I was pretty late to it, but maybe only like two years late to it. I got it used on CD and I remember listening to it in the fall. Uh, at the same time, I was listening to Kid A from Radiohead, so I'm very eclectic in that way. Anyway, it's a fall record for me. I know I, I've already reviewed it for this channel, but I want to talk about it again. So we're going to pick the opening track, Sue Studio, just because I've been listening to it so much, and it sounds so great on this new stereo system I have. And I'm a huge fan of this record. I, I think I said in the review, and, I, and when we talked to Harry Kim about this, what I love so much about this record is that unlike some of the other uh, tribute records to Genesis and to Phil Collins, they basically would just kind of play this elevator music and then they would take the melody verbatim and then they would just have an instrument play the vocal melody. Or in some some cases, these instrumental songs, they'd actually have background singers. It's kind of cheesy. It never really worked well, with the exception of Daryl Sturmer's um, Another Side of Genesis record, which I love a lot. But what's so special about A Hot Night in Paris is that the standard to which, pun intended, the standard to which these songs actually now sound like standards, like the standard that Phil and Harry and everyone involved, all the different composers that took on these songs, the standard that they held these uh, um, arrangements to was so high. And you you can hear that on one of the most intricate and, and exciting arrangements in Invisible Touch. Susudio, on the other hand, is pretty much very similar to the album, with exception of, of the drum machines are now replaced with Phil being a little bit more jazzy and big band, lots of different fills happening. Uh, it's a great opening track for the album. I think it's actually really important that you open the record with something super familiar, because like I mentioned, uh, Invisible Touch uh, or I Don't Care Anymore, some uh, even Los Endos, like they're a little bit more obscure, not necessarily Los Endos, um, but that's all like that's all you know the song, you know the melody, but they disguise it so well that you think it's like just a classic big band standard. So I think it's really important that you kind of open with something like Sue Studio where you're like, no, 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 you know what this song is, Sue Sue Studio. And it's difficult too, right? Because they probably were wondering, should we replace the horns? Because this this song is so horn heavy on No Jacket Required. So should we replace those with something completely different? Should flutes do it? Should uh, Do they have flutes in big bands or is it just brass? No, they probably don't have flutes. Never mind. <laughs> and I think they do it a little bit. I think the verses are a little bit more sax centric, um, but there's really no replacing those horns. Um, there is a little bit more uh, electric guitar than you hear, uh, like kind of more jazzy electric guitar or funk electric guitar that you hear in this version than you actually hear in the No Jacket version. But I think it's just a big bombastic tune. And it's actually one of Phil's best tunes from a drum standpoint on this record because he gets to do some really cool little soloing that is like very Montreal Jazz Festival, like just total like, you know, jazz drum fills. I love it. There's also uh, original melodies. I think that da, 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 da. that might be like taken from something, but it seems like it, it has its own melody. Again, another thing I love about Hot Night in Paris is the songs have their own identity on this record. Even a song like a ballad, like Against All Odds, is way more stripped back than the even the original song is, which is really cool. Anyway, huge fan of this record, huge fan of the opening track. I, I love the French guy who introduces Phil Collins and the Phil Collins big band. I always say that. I, I'd say it on a weekly basis out loud to anyone who's around, and I look weird, but I just love that accent. Anyway, what do you think of this song? I probably You've probably already told me what you think about this record because we did a review not too long ago, and we talked about it a lot with Harry Kim. But let me know what you think specifically of this version of Sue Studio. And do you have a, a favorite... Um, rendition on this record. Is it That's All or is it Against All Odds or Hold On My Heart or Los Endos? Let me know um, what you think about this record and what you think about this song. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. For exclusive videos, behind the scenes content, and to have your say on future topics before I film, have a look at our Patreon page. Thanks for watching.